Well, hints and tips for people who rent Airbnbs or other short-term rentals when they travel. Hi, my name is Dave. I am a slow traveler. I am slower all the time. I, uh, I'm a uh, part-time expat. I, uh, I spend uh, several months a year outside of my home country, my res country of residence, which is the uh, United States. And uh, I uh, stay a lot in a lot of Airbnbs, uh, very rarely for less than a week and most often for you know a month or two. So uh, these are my hints and tips for how to get by uh, traveling in, uh, in using Airbnbs when you travel. Now, um, you know, Airbnbs are a little controversial. <laughs> Not everybody thinks they're a good idea, especially the uh, hotel industry who's being disrupted by, <laughs> by the Airbnb business, but I really like them. Uh, they're economical. Uh, they are uh, interesting. Uh, I'm in an Airbnb right now in the uh, city of Parma in the region of Emilia Romagna in Italy. Uh, is, is it the fanciest one I've ever been in? No, it's not. It's actually... Uh, but it's actually comfortable and clean and I think safe. And uh, so uh, for me, it's, it works out very well. Well, uh, just a few hints and tips, things that I always try to do when I, um, when I stay in an Airbnb. First of all, when you check in, uh, and you, sometimes you have a chance to meet your host, sometimes you don't. For this particular one, it was a self-check-in process where there was a little box by the outside door and you put the combination in and the keys were inside and that got you to the apartment um, in, into the building and up to the apartment. What I think are a couple of important tips about uh, about uh, kind of security on a little small scale. These are the keys to the apartment I'm staying in right now. These these three things right here. The, the one to the door, the one to the front door, and uh, a miscellaneous one which might go to the mailbox. I don't know. I'm not getting mail here, not expecting mail, so I'm, I haven't, you know, inquired or checked to see what that is. But you might notice that I have it on my regular keychain that I bring with me. I got my little mini whisk just to remind me that I like to whisk things, and I've got an Apple AirTag. And so, uh, being able to find my keys when I'm traveling is at least as important as when I'm home. And uh, I like AirTags a lot. If you saw my. Uh, my video recently on getting pickpocketed in Rome, you know that I used the equivalent of an air tag called an air card to, uh, to get my wallet back after it was uh, pickpocketed me, uh, pickpocketed for me in a, uh, in a subway station in, uh, in Rome. Well, uh, also, you know, when you're in a strange apartment building, you're not even sure what floor, how many flights of stairs to go up. And when you get up there, there's four doors and which door is the one to the apartment that you rented. And, and uh, you know you're tired and you're in a new city and so on so it's worth uh, it's worth trying to give yourself some advanced organizers i use painter's tape <laughs> i keep a a little roll of painter's tape in my kit bag uh, with my tools and so on that i carry with me and um, i just tear a little piece off and i put it uh, next to the uh, next to the doorknob maybe on the door uh, maybe on the top of the stairway maybe next to the button if it's an elevator you know what floor i'm on I, try, I just give myself advanced organizers and then on my way out i carefully peel them all off and i take them and i you know take them to the nearest trash can and throw them away so uh, hints and tips for for uh, security for getting in and out of your apartment uh, but oftentimes you meet the uh, you meet the the host meet the landlord and, and even if you don't meet them in person you can always talk to them online, talk to them through the app. And um, there's a few important questions that I always ask. The first question that I ask is, where is the circuit breaker box? <laughs> because a lot of these Airbnbs are in old buildings, and uh, sometimes the electricity, the electrical system is, is old, and is being stressed by uh, the use of new appliances like a, uh, a mini split or even a, something as uh, innocuous as a uh, as a water kettle, a water boiler, or as an electric water heater. You just never know what's in there. And I've been in more than one Airbnb where the power went out. And so I always ask where the uh, the power box is, where are the circuit breakers, the interrupters. And uh, in some countries, including this one, including in Italy, there are often two sets. 
There's a set of uh, the small breakers that are usually inside the apartment, inside the house, or uh, and then there's the ones for the big appliances, for the washing machine, um, you know, for things like that, that um, are in another box, often outside the apartment. And so um, you need to know where both are. Um, and uh, I always ask that question, and, and oftentimes the... Uh, the landlord, the post will say, oh, yeah, I'm glad you asked that question. I was in a, an apartment in uh, Rome recently, and I asked the uh, I asked the landlord where, you know, where the box was. And she says, well, she says, um, it's in this other room that's kind of my junk room, and I don't really like people to go in there because it's, you know, I'm embarrassed by how junky it is. But, you know, look in this secret spot right here. Here's the key, you know. You know, if you need it, there's how you get to the box. And and so the landlords normally understand that uh, you might need to get to, the, uh, get to the circuit breakers. It's important. I also try to ask where the water shutoff is. I had an apartment uh, a few years ago for a couple months in, uh, in Bologna. And one day we woke up to... Uh, to kind of find the, uh, that was a two-story apartment we found uh, downstairs in the kitchen, uh, you know, the water kind of seeping out from underneath the sink, and it was getting more and more and more, and it turned out that uh, there was a pump under the sink that had failed. Again, an old building. This building was actually uh, from the, uh, I think the land landlady said that it had um, Actually, the beginning part of the building was from the 700s, so it was a, a very old building. And uh, this uh, pump had failed, and uh, water was seeping out. And I was able to figure out where the uh, cutoff was and turn it off and, and get a hold of the landlady who was, wasn't even in town. She was in Sicily at the time, so uh, she was real glad to uh, to hear that I had turned the water off and I had a plumber there shortly to <laughs> solve the problem, and uh, actually when I turned the water off, I turned it off for three apartments uh, on that floor, but uh, sadly I had to do that. So so yeah, knowing where the cutoffs are for utilities uh, is important, and uh, it's worth asking that question. Well, the second uh, question I always ask the landlord if I'm staying somewhere for a while, uh, for a week or more, is uh, what do you do about the trash? because every city, every commune, every region has their own system. Now here in Parma, they are big trash separators and there is a bucket for organic trash. There's a bucket for plastic. There's a bucket for carta, for paper and cardboard. Um, there is a, uh, a bucket for glass. And each of those different containers you do something different with. So uh, on one particular day of the week, you take the organic bucket and you put it out by the street and they come along and pick up the organic trash and take it somewhere where I guess it's composted. Uh, the, um, the plastic is on another day. It's in a yellow bag. You leave it by the front door. They haul the bag away. Uh, the uh, indifferencia, there's a container down the street for, and you just carry it down to that container and drop it off. And uh, in uh, for the um, for the glass, there's another container down the street in a different direction. So, you know, you need to know where those things are if you're going to be a good uh, a good tenant. And I think it's important when you're renting an Airbnb to try to treat the place like it's your own house. It's not to uh, not to treat it like a party house, not to treat it like, you know, like a hotel, because it's not like a hotel, it's somebody's home. Well, it's probably somebody's grandma's home or parents' home or, or uncle or aunt's home in the past, you know, or it may just be an investment that the owner has made in one of those kind of places, but it's still somebody's house. It's not like you're staying in a hotel that has a large housekeeping staff and a, a maintenance person on call and somebody at the front desk, you know, it's it's a different deal. And you pay less for an Airbnb to kind of make up for that. So yeah, I think it's um I think it's uh it's really important to try to be a good guest and try to keep the place clean, try to follow the rules about trash and, and so on. Now um the third question I always ask, and uh, I'm, I think this is a good one, is local recommendations because uh, I want to know where the local market is. I like to cook when I travel. We'll talk about the kitchen in just a second, but I like to cook when I travel, and uh, you know I uh, like to go to the local markets. You know, 
I'm alone or with family or with friends, whatever, I still like to cook and uh, I like to feed myself. I eat out plenty. Don't don't uh, don't worry about that. But I usually uh, have at least one meal and sometimes two meals a day. Uh, if not, I cook for myself where I'm staying. And um, you know, it's um, it's important to find the right place to go get the food. So you know, I do go to supermarkets, and of course, and uh, supermarkets are fine. And there's produce markets, um, mini markets. There's a, actually a Ukrainian mini market about a block away from here that I found the other day. Um, and I actually bought a, I went there to get some water and I got a bottle of Ukrainian uh, bubbly water, Ukrainian aqua frisanti. So who knew that there'd be a, a Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian market, you know, a mini market uh, in a Italian city, but there is. Um, I also want to know where the good bar is, where the best pastries are for coffee in the morning. And uh, I especially want to know where the street markets are, where the food markets are. Now, I have not found a great food market in the city of Parma, but luckily, just down the, uh, just down the train tracks, uh, a $6 fare is the city of Modena. And Modena has one of the most fantastic uh, central markets in the whole country that I've been, I've been to a lot of them in Italy. Modena is fantastic. So the other day I went to Modena and I, I loaded up on things. I'm at the end of my trip now. I'm heading back to the United States in just a few days. So I'm, I'm getting things, uh, Italian food to bring back with me, uh, pasta and uh, certain kind of flour that I like to use and uh, certain, um, some orange extract that I use for uh, making cakes and things like that. Um, just a, a, some triple concentrated tomato paste in tubes. I got several of those. I may get more. My my suitcase is underweight. I have my scale with me to uh, weigh my suitcase because uh, I come close to the limit when I head back to the United States, mostly with uh, mostly with food and and gifts for family and friends. Um, so yeah, bars, and then I also ask about restaurants, and uh, I get really good recommendations from my host for restaurants. Um, now, uh, while a Airbnb listing may say that the uh, that the apartment includes uh, shampoo and soap and things like that, um, sometimes it doesn't, or sometimes it's kind of not something I'd want to put on my body or whatever. I always carry a really small leak-proof bottle of Dr. Bronner's. And if you don't know what Dr. Bronner's is, you're missing out on something wonderful. It's a soap that's been around for a long time. It's uh, made in California. And it's, uh, it was, the Dr. Bronner was an interesting character. Uh, and uh, the uh, bottles are full of all kinds of philosophical writing and everything. Uh, I like the peppermint uh, version myself, uh, the original. And so I bring some of that with me, and it's I, I use it for everything when I'm traveling. If there's not, you know, the right kind of uh, soap in the apartment that I'm staying in, I use it as a as a shaving uh, uh, foam for my face. I just put some in my hand and use the brush to brush it up and get some, put it on my face to shave with. You know, I use it for shampoo. If there's not shampoo in the apartment, I've even used it for a laundry detergent uh, when I've been uh, and run out of detergent or needed to wash something out and not had not had a the right kind of soap to use so uh, i use dr bronner's well i always rent that brings up washing machines and i always try to rent an apartment with a washing machine i i uh, like traveling light although uh, i don't always travel light because i do these this videography and i have uh, cameras with me and and uh, microphones and like that one <laughs> and uh you know, all kinds of batteries and, and lenses and all kinds of stuff that I bring with me. So uh, probably more than I need, but uh, so I don't travel light. But um, I try to limit the amount of clothing I take with me, and I try to uh, to reuse clothing and, you know, not, uh, you know, not uh, you know, go ahead and have a different outfit every day of my travels. I just can't do that. I can't afford the weight or the you know, the cost of caring for all that clothing. So I do a lot of laundry, and sometimes I do a laundry every other day. Uh, so I'm looking for an apartment with a laundry machine. Now, laundry machines in Europe are different than laundry machines in the United States. Uh, we don't have or commonly have the kind of washing machines they have here. The ones they have here are, uh, I would call them 24 inches deep. They're they're not very, they're like two feet deep. They're not as, as big as the uh, washing machines in the United States. Um, 
and they work a little bit differently. Now, if you want to see how to use one particular kind of wash, Italian washing machine, if you look up there or over there or somewhere, there'll be a, a link to a video I did a couple years ago uh, in an apartment that I've stayed in several times in, uh, in, in the city of Bologna that has a really cool washing machine. And while it's not the same as every Italian washing machine, it, uh, it, certainly, uh, it certainly is very similar. So, um, you know, uh, the washing machines are just a little bit different. Now, uh, sometimes you find laundry soap in the apartment you're renting. And on this trip, I normally stay in, a, in one apartment for at least a month, but on this trip I've been doing quite a bit of traveling. Um, I had some video projects in different places I wanted to do and uh, had some... Uh, I had some uh, tourism that I wanted to do in different places and a couple of cities I wanted to see that I'd never been to before or never spent time in. So uh, I've stayed in quite a few apartments. I've stayed in, let's see, uh, Torino, uh, Bologna, Rome, Naples, uh, Rome again. I think I've stayed in seven, eight, or nine uh, Airbnbs now on this trip. Uh, I guess maybe eight. And uh, of those eight, all those eight apartments had washing machines, and all but two of them had laundry soap in them. So <laughs> two of them, there was no soap. And uh, so what do you do? You know, well, what I do is I just go to uh, to the uh, equivalent of the dollar store, uh, the, uh, the Euro store, the bazaar, uh, and buy the cheapest laundry soap I can find. And usually it's a couple of euros. If I have to buy it at a regular grocery store, it might be four or five euros. But it's a small price to pay because I'd pay more than that in, in just time and effort, let alone the cost of using the machines if I went to a laundromat and had to, you know, tote my stuff there and back and, and buy soap it's still at the laundromat. So so I just buy some and I'll buy more than I need. I left, uh, I left uh, three quarters of a bottle of uh, laundry soap in in uh, Tirana, Albania the other day, and I, I left, um, you know, a, a large container that was barely used of laundry detergent in, uh, in Naples and Napoli the other day. So, uh, yeah, I just buy some soap as you go. Now, some people are using these laundry sheets um, to carry with them, and, you know, they probably work just fine. It's just one more thing to carry with you, and uh, if that's something you want to do, why not? Uh, now, dryers... Uh, are very rare in uh, in Europe in general, and uh, here in Italy where I am right now, they're almost non-existent. I've uh, been in one apartment and then one home that I, I house in. And no, I, I take it back. I've only been in one apartment that had a uh, that had a dryer. Yeah, only one, and um, it's very rare to find one. What you normally find is either a line outside the window that uh, maybe it's on a pulley, so you can you know, clip your clothes to the line and, and dry outside the window, or uh, you might have a folding clothing rack. Uh, that's very common to have inside the apartment. Now, in this apartment, and this uh, is, I think, the first time it's happened ever, is there was no rack uh, and no uh, no line. And I could have called up the, uh, the landlord and asked, and maybe they would have brought one or something, but uh, it wasn't that big a deal because I just went down to the uh, Euro store and uh, and spent a dollar eighty uh, in, in well in euros dollar uh, euro eighty cents, then um, bought a little piece of rope with hooks on the end and and hooked it from one cabinet in the kitchen to a cabinet over here in the living room. It's just really just one big room, and it became my clothesline and it worked out just fine. Now normally uh, I forgot it this time. I'm really sorry I forgot it. I carry this really cool little thing with me that takes up no space at all. It's about the size of a of a quarter, a little pouch, and it's got a really uh, strong line, about 15 feet of um, of um, of this uh, braided uh, nylon line. That's actually two pieces braided together, and uh, it basically it it works like clothespins. You know, you tie it from one end to the other. There's a hook on one end and a hook on the other end, and uh, you put this thing up and Again, it's like a rope that you carry with you, but it's really, really small and really compact, not like the big rope that I, I bought at the, uh, the Euro store uh, earlier, well, last week. Um, and um, it's from a company called Sea to Summit. Uh, I don't have any, this is not sponsored by anybody <laughs> except you for thanks for watching. 
but uh, the Sea to Summit line works really well, and it, uh, I normally carry it with me. I just kick it myself that I didn't bring it with me this time. Um, now, if you don't have a washing machine, and you know you get to in a place that was supposed to have one, or it doesn't work, or it's not there, or you're only in a place for a few days and you still need to, to wash your clothes, you need to wash your undies at least, uh, what I use is one of these. And this is a, a sink flap. Uh, you can buy them for a buck or two um, on Amazon if you can't find them at your local hardware store. And this is big enough that it'll fit pretty much um, any, um, any sink. And it weighs almost nothing. And it just goes over the, the drain of the sink and it blocks it off enough that you can, you can, you know, hold some water. <coughs> Excuse me. Time for some Ukrainian water. And um, and then you know use your Dr. Bronner's or your laundry, your laundry soap or a little bit of shampoo or whatever you have, and wash your clothes and hang them out. Uh, that's for emergency use only. Though I try to normally uh, have access to a um, to a uh, to a washing machine when I travel, and because you know more and more Airbnbs have them as a feature. Now let's talk about heating and cooling because. You know, not every apartment, when you travel and you rent an apartment, not every apartment has the same kind of heating and cooling system. This apartment over here on the wall is this interesting little, um, I think it's a, it's a yeah, Honeywell thermostat, and it, um, it is locked with a PIN number. So, so I can't adjust it, but, uh, if it, but it's staying comfortable for me, and this actually turns on and off a water boiler, which is in a cabinet right in front of me. And over there, there's a radiator, another radiator in the bedroom. There's a radiator in the bathroom that doesn't seem to be affected by this. But when it gets cold, and it, it was cold the first couple nights I was here, the heat comes on, the hot water comes on. It's a gas-fired hot water heater, when it, like an instant hot water heater, and it circulates water through the different radiators, and um, it warms the house up. Um, I, I was in another uh, Airbnb recently. Uh, I won't disclose the location because <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble with the uh, with the landlord. I want to go back there one day. But uh, that particular Airbnb uh, had a locked thermostat, but uh, I was able to electronically lock thermostat. I was able to go online and uh, read the documentation for that particular kind of thermostat and was able to figure out how to adjust it to my, to my satisfaction. Then when I left, I put it back like it was. Um, so yeah, you may not always have the heating you want. Uh, make sure you bring, bring layers with you, bring some flannel with you, bring, uh, bring some thermal undershirts with you, things like that to, uh, to stay warm on a, and a stocking cap to stay warm on a cold night. Um, but it's even more difficult in the summer when it's really, really hot outside. And, uh, not every apartment has air conditioning. Now, uh, air conditioning is becoming a little more common because um, of the um, introduction of mini split systems. And you see a lot more mini split systems in, uh, in Airbnbs and small apartments. And so um, having, uh, you know, if you don't have mini split, if you don't have central air conditioning, which is almost unheard of in Italy in apartments, uh, what I've done in the past, I was in an apartment uh, one time in the middle of the summer in June and July, and it was really hot, and the room I was sleeping in was just unbearable. And I just went to the hardware store down the street, and uh, I said, I'd like a ventilatore, and I'd like a fan. And they had, you know, four or five different fans. I bought one for maybe 20 euros or so and toted it back to the apartment, and when I left that apartment, uh, a couple months later, I left it as a gift for the, uh, the next tenants and for the and for the owner. So, uh, you know, you can solve these problems, but uh, but yeah, don't be surprised that you need to solve a few problems. Well, let's um, let's move to the kitchen, and uh, you know, I love to shop in local markets, and that's one of the reasons I like to travel so much is that uh, I get a chance to. Uh, I get a chance to shop in local markets, try interesting new foods, try uh, try to new recipes. I, it's just it's fun for me. It's something I really enjoy. Um, I try to eat like a local. I try to uh, to shop like a local, and I shop almost every day for food. I I go to a market or to a grocery store, 
Um, and, uh, you know, when you go to it, when you run an Airbnb, uh, the kitchen, you should expect that the kitchen may not be equipped the same way your kitchen at home is as far as pots and pans and things like that. Uh, usually the frying pans are for me the worst. They, they're normally, um, uh, the, uh, the nonstick kind and they're normally just scratched to hell and, and, uh, you know, I don't think that's safe to use, but I only, you know, use them for a little bit of time. So I, I do the best I can if they're not terrible. And actually, I have uh, in the past actually gone and purchased a new pan uh, for an Airbnb I was staying in uh, just to uh, just to avoid that problem. Um, but, um, you know, one of the things you should not expect is to find a sharp knife. <laughs> And I rarely find a sharp knife. Now I've I've been surprised. I've been surprised a couple of times. I was uh, in Tirana, Albania, a few weeks ago in a, a really nice uh, apartment. In a really, um, you know, the building looked not very good from the outside, but inside it was an incredible apartment. And the um, they had really nice um, stainless steel uh, pots and pans, and they were all beautiful, professional grade, really nice. Um, it was a great surprise, um, but uh, I, it's, they still had dull knives. <laughs> it's very unusual to find a sharp knife in, the, in an Airbnb. Now, I used to bring a Swiss Army knife with me on trips, um, and uh, a few years ago, I sat and looked at the Swiss Army knife and said, what do I really need in this knife, and what am I carrying that I don't need? And it was a heavy knife, and, and so I've kind of pared that down. And uh, now what I do is I bring with me on trips, I bring a little, a little knife with me just from home. Uh, this is a Tranmontina, the carbon, uh, German carbon steel knife. They're not very expensive, four or five dollars. Uh, and uh, they sharpen up really well. And I keep it in a, uh, I keep it in a sheath, in a, in a plastic sheath that I carry with my check baggage so I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, getting in trouble for carrying a knife on the airplane. And, um, you know, it works pretty well, but after, you know, a week or two, it's not a, it's not like a Japanese uh, sushi knife that never needs sharpening. This one needs sharpening every now and then. So I also bring with me a, um, a sharpening stone. And again, it doesn't weigh very much. It's a little Arkansas a natural oil stone that I think I, yeah, I picked up in, in Hot Springs, Arkansas <laughs> at the National Park. So, uh, yeah, I I carry it with me, you know, on almost all my trips, and I try not to forget it. I have a little bag of goodies that, you know, has kind of the, some of the things that I take with me, you know, as kind of my, my utility stuff. And so the knife and the sharpening stone stays with me. And oftentimes, if there's a nice knife in an Airbnb kitchen, uh, but it's it's dull, uh, I'll just go ahead before I leave or when I get there, actually, if I want to use that knife and I'll go ahead and, and hit it with the stone and, um, and go ahead and get it, you know, up to a nice edge and be able to, uh, be able to use it. So those two things together, you know, weigh a few ounces, but, um, they, uh, and they don't take up very much room, but they're, they're very useful and, uh, you know, it saves the frustration of, of, um, having to deal with those kind of problems. Well, the last thing I'll show you before I, um, close this is a um, is my toolkit, and I used to carry a more extensive toolkit um, uh, because you know you never know when something's going to go wrong. You might need a screwdriver, you might need a wrench, and so I used to carry uh, like this Swiss Army knife that had a wrench on it and had all kinds of different screwdrivers and you know different knife blades and stuff like that. But it was big and heavy, and uh, I really didn't need it. So what I bring with me now is this little kit right here. Uh, this actually is a Victorinox, but you can get them from different companies. Uh, this has a, uh, a socket on one end and a socket on the other end, and it takes the standard bits, standard screwdriver bits. So there you go. There's a Phillips screwdriver ready to go. Um, and these are, uh, they're a little hard to find, the Victorinox ones, but uh, you can find the Chinese equivalent for just a couple of dollars uh, from AliExpress and places like that. So. They're uh, not quite as elegant looking as the Swiss ones or the German, whoever these are. I think they're Swiss. Uh, Victoria Knox, I think it's Swiss. But, uh, but they work really well. And, you know, you can put whatever, you can put whatever bits in you want. I keep a, a really tiny uh, uh, Phillips screwdriver bit that I use for, uh, 
that I use for one of the musical instruments that I play, and that stays with me in here. I have um, a couple of hex keys that I use with my camera, my photographic equipment that I need for taking things on and off and tightening things and loosening things. I have a big screwdriver. I've got a big Phillips driver. I've got, um, you know, pretty much everything I need, and this, uh, this little kit has evolved over time. So, And then the last tool I carry with me is a pair of what I would call ignition pliers. These are channel lock pliers, but they're super tiny. They're really, really tiny. They're cute. And uh, I think these are, I got these in a Craftsman toolkit years ago. You can see it's starting to show its age. Some of the chrome is flaked off. But I find these are pretty much everything I need for 90% of what I come across when I'm traveling. And I do find myself having to fix things from time to time, especially with my photographic gear, but also things uh, in the apartments that I stay in. So, hey, that's it for uh, Airbnb hints and tips. Um, I think the main thing is that I want to stress is be a good traveler, uh, be kind, be cordial, uh, be friendly, and, uh, you know, don't be demanding. Be, you know, if you have a problem, ask a question. You know, hey, I, I don't know how to make this work, and, you know, I, where should I go to get laundry soap, and what, is there any special soap I should use, you know, and, uh, and things like that. So, yeah, just be a, be a good traveler and, uh, you know, don't be a jerk and life will be good for you. Well, from uh, this really uh, interesting but not very um, fancy <laughs> rental apartment uh, in the city of Parma, Italy, uh, this is Dave from the Department of Wacky Ideas. If you like this content and you want to subscribe, that wouldn't be a bad thing for me. And I hope that whatever you do, you're, uh, you're kind to your friends and you have a smile on your face. Ciao.